solitude and loneliness. And solitude is a gift. Loneliness is not. The more we learn to sit with our pain, the more we learn that human emotions are not dangerous, they're normal. Fear is normal, but panic is not. But when we look at our society today, and for my book, Closer Together, I interviewed an incredible array of experts, the best in their industries, so I could get and share with you, and as many people as possible, really what motivates us to act and react the way we do. Why do I, Sophie, have the personality that I do? So if we were to shut down these lights, and I take my high heels off, which I almost tripped <laughs> coming in uh, uh, running, and no makeup, and you don't know much about the accomplishments or what I've done before, who's left standing in front of you? That's the person I want you to meet. This is the person I want to go forward and meet other, you know, others as. And when I was a young kid, my parents used to tell me, um, you know, when you meet people, just say, hi, my name is Sophie, do you want to play? I swear to you, I'm still like this at 49. A part of me is like, a new friend, woo! Um, and I'm also like that very early in the morning, so my two teenagers are like, oh, please. So when I was young, the reason why I say this is because we're all one trauma away from each other. And as 20 years or more now, as a mental health advocate, this is the lesson that I've not only learned, but integrated and experienced. It takes one traumatic life event to change your brain, to change your mind, the way you interact with yourself and the way you interact with others, or a series of little traumas that you don't even notice, but that are there. And at some point, your body says, no, thank you. And that's why Gabor Mate wrote a book called When the Body Says No, and Besser van der Kolk wrote a book called um, The Body Keeps the Score. And now everybody's talking about this, because post-pandemic, did you read the book? <laughs> because post-pandemic, um, we kind of finally at a very high price, realized how human connection is key to everything in our lives, especially when it comes to leadership positions, whether it's in our own households, whether it's in our schools, at work, in our romantic relationships, in our friendships. How we lead ourselves influences how we lead others. Now, when I was young, going back to childhood, um, I had addiction on both sides of my family. And I had very good, loving parents, but who, comes, who come from generations where trauma wasn't really looked at, right? I think that, you know, from our 30s to our 50s and these generations that we're in, uh, there might be younger, younger people in the room here or, or older, but I think we're cycle breakers. I think we live in a generation and in a time where knowledge is accessible to us and we're able to have more discernment onto why our parents or grandparents suffered and how we can break that. And it takes one person from one generation, one, to change that cycle for other generations to come. So as I grew up, I think little Sophie wore the cape where I had to save my mom, I had to save my dad, I had to save my mom from my dad. And in many ways, that's not a cape a child should wear. I'm sure you all wore different kind of capes. You might want to think about your own childhood. And by the way, if you had a perfect childhood, great. But really, when you go deeper into the neurobiology of why we have the personality that we do and how we lead ourselves and others, a lot of things can be explained. 